I own a BMW. I own a, own an Audi A6. I also have a Merc, but I do, I don't use that much. Uh, I have a Jaguar, and then I own basic cars like Innova and Sonnet, Chevrolet. The average luxury car in India can cost upwards of 50 lakhs and go as high as a couple crores. But it doesn't end just with that. Owning expensive things always incurs more expenses. Yeah, the fuel costs for all the cars which I have, all right, it would be roughly around 50 to 60,000 per month. Not to forget your hospital bills from all the anxiety of driving your expensive car in high traffic cities like Bangalore or Mumbai. If you've owned a car before, you already know that the on-road price includes things like registration fee, road tax and insurance over the ex-showroom price of the car. Test drove the Range Rover Evoque. Evoque is their basic model. And that is the first car we test yeah. drove and it okay, had, it had like, everything. aesthetically, it was good looking. We asked for the budget and it oh, was... Oh, that was 94. 95. With any big purchase, your budget becomes the first deciding factor. But how do you decide the right budget? Yeah, we had a budget of 50, yes. So I asked her to, you know what, let's go and check Mercedes. And I saw this car and I immediately fell in love with this car. So there are two versions of GLA. There's this GLA AMG and there's a GLA as well. And then they also told us the price and then we were like, oh, no, no, it doesn't yeah. fit our budget. So no. <laughs> the normal GLA was costing us around 56 and this one was around 73 on road. The first thing to look at is your spending power. Ideally, the car should not cost you more than 50% of your annual household income. If you have other existing financial obligations like loans or medical expenses, make sure you take those into account when deciding your budget. Once that is set, it boils down to your expectations from the car. She wanted a, a luxury car, a car in which we can go on long drives uh, because our other car, Polo, was not very comfortable for her. <laughs> <laughs> and we're designers. Our primary criteria was design. Then comes engine, power, all of that, right? So the it had to be a good looking car. We were not happy with the interiors. We were not happy with the engine. There were so many things that we were unhappy about, which was the GLA, right? But at this point when you're paying 50 lakhs, and if you're buying something, you're compromising on it, that does not make sense. And there are only two options, so either don't buy it, or spend some extra and buy what you like. He test drove the AMG and that car's pickup, <laughs> I saw the smile in his face and that was it. Then I knew, okay, now I can convince him to get this car. <laughs> we knew early on that we might not plan for kids. So, the, <laughs> so we don't say. <laughs> it's like it's either house, kids are there, but for us it was, Okay, we have the money because we are not spending it anywhere else. We yeah. might as well buy a car that we like. What happens if you can't afford to spend so much on a car? Does that mean you'll never own a luxury car? Wrong. This is where the concept of pre-owned luxury cars come in. I myself prefer uh, buying a used car which is less driven and you can get it at an affordable price. Whereas uh, a new car the depreciation on the new car would be a lot more. Uh, if you could notice, people in the entertainment industry mostly use luxury cars. And they use used luxury cars. Luxury cars tend to depreciate by 40 to 50% within the first five years of ownership. Which means that if you can find the right deals, then a used car could be a much cheaper alternative. For example, Zane managed to buy a six-year-old Jaguar XF at 25 lakhs which is 60 lakhs cheaper than its actual price. I would like to give one suggestion to people who want to buy pre-owned cars. In these cars, engines will not give you much of a trouble. Transmissions will not give you much of a trouble. But electricals, yes. Because these cars have a lot more sensors because of their superior engineering. So they should look at the kilometers, the engine, the gearbox, of the suspension and tires. Service history, of course. Pre-owned or brand new. One thing that doesn't change is that your expenses won't end up with the purchase. You will still have recurring expenses. We had 40 as down payment and the 33 as loan. So what they told us is consider a lack for the servicing may go down or up. And of course the Insurance is 1.2. So close to around 2.2 lakhs is what we are expecting 
per year cost on this car. Majorly, recurring expenses in the car will include cost of servicing, insurance, your EMIs and fuel cost. Depending on the car you buy, the fuel cost can vary a lot as it has a lot to do with the kind of fuel used and the mileage of the car. The cost increases for petrol because the Mercedes guys, they told us to put in a, the power shell fuel only for the longevity of the engine. 4.5 to 5 is the city average. The city average, which is shocking. But the moment we go on highways because we take a lot of long drives, when I saw that it's 9 or 10, I was like, wow, okay. For context, this is what the expenses will look like on a luxury car versus a regular car. In a year, you will be spending around four times more on a luxury car than a regular car. Of course, these are only the predictable expenses. God forbid, if the car goes through any other major damage and needs parts replaced, that will be an additional expense. My transmission had a major problem in my 5 series which, which cost a whooping amount of 3 lakh rupees to repair it. That was the minimum cost to repair the transmission. The maximum if I would go in the company, it would straight away cost me 10 lakh rupees. Even with regular servicing, private garages will cost you much less than opting for official company services. But you need to understand the trade-off here. Private mechanics might not offer the same kind of expertise that an authorized service will give you. Also, if you have plans of selling the car at any point, then it will be helpful if the car has a recorded service history, which only authorized centers will be able to provide. To me, this was the, the only car that I will ever own. Car. So this is it. This is my car. <laughs> for a very, this is our car. <laughs> but for a very, very long time, <laughs> like I'm not going to buy another car. <laughs> the first time when we drove to uh, our hometown, that's Bombay, Thane. We have the entire family coming in and like, you know, for them it's like, we always had a dream of sitting in a luxury car. Oh, but yeah, now, like... but now we own it, right? And they are like sitting, and there is. And you ask him to drive, they're like, no. <laughs> you drive, I will sit. But then that's the pride in in her family, in my family is just another level because they'll call up their friends and they'll say, chal chal, you know what? I have to go to meet my friend. Uh, drop me. 